Okay, so this supplemental video is related to lecture 2, slides number 11. Uh, here we're going to focus on the reason behind introducing a new uh, energy form named enthalpy. So, um, as we have discussed in earlier, we've been um, tracking internal energy using measurable quantity a heat and work okay so the the previous supplemental video we actually gave you an example using ideal gas to calculate the work so that's something we have um, illustrated but many other cases when we have a system that's more generic this is not ideal gas um, work is actually not very easy to calculate so what um, in most of the cases, what we can uh, measure more convenient, uh, more conveniently is the heat. So the question is, uh, how how can we use the heat to track the change of the internal energy or basic the energy state of the system? Now in the case when we have a system that's actually in a fixed volume, and that's actually very straightforward. Let's say for example, if you have a system that have the volume is constant. So, but in this case, since there's no volume change, uh, the work would be zero, right? So you can track the internal en energy change by simply measure uh, heat and in transfer in and out of the system. So that's why we, earlier we mentioned in this case, we denote this heat as a QV or uh, fixed volume heat transfer. Now, and then we introduced a series of um, concepts. For example, the heat capacity chain is representing uh, the internal energy change in over a, a range of temperature or per degree of uh, internal energy uh, increase, the amount of heat you need to increase the internal energy. Or if this is not a constant, you can take a derivative of the internal energy over a tiny range change of the temperature. Um, so this is something that uh, we can do if we have a system where the volume is totally fixed. So, so if we want to um, monitor the energy state of the system or the change of its in internal energy uh, under the situation where we have constant volume, uh, the task is relatively straightforward as long as you know the heat capacity of constant uh, volume then if you know the temperature difference and then the internal energy changing would be simply just the, the heat capacity and all you have to do is just figure out what the um, what the temperature changing is during after the heat is transferred so this will give you um, the change of the internal energy now uh, even in the case where the heat capacity is variable over the temperature, you can also do this just simply by, you know, integration over a temperature range um, and then CV over the dt. So that's, that is assuming when the CV is actually um, uh, not a constant, but rather a, a function of the temperature. And depending on what the function, you can do the integration accordingly. So this is actually uh, straightforward when you uh, deal with the constant volume uh, internal energy change uh, during the using an experimentally measurable quantity such as heat and then from measure the heat uh, the heat can be measured through the temperature change and then therefore you can get the change of the internal energy but most of the biological reaction or system that we're dealing with in the living world the system is not a constant volume but rather constant pressure so we're under the one atmosphere pressure. So in this case, uh, we can still measure the heat that go in the system. So um, say this is the system on the constant volume. This is the system on constant pressure. Now, the only difference here is that the we can actually denote this heat put into the system is the QP. Uh, unlike the case when we have fixed volume, 
uh, here, you can't simply just uh, take, you know, now work is not equal to zero, right? Because when it is, you heat up the system, the system might just ever so slightly expand a tiny little bit. And no matter how small this is, that's equal, that's not equal to zero. So if you go back to the first law, and then the delta U would be equal to QP plus some kind of uh, work. Now that means we can't not just simply measure the heat um, as then to measure the internal energy change. So this definitely become a very inconvenient if we were to use energy uh, as a function of the state to monitor the change of the system by experimentally measurable of the heat transfer. So as a result, we need a new state function to basically correlate or keep track of the energy transfer between the system and the environment. So if, if the QP is, does not correlate to the state function of internal energy, so what does QP uh, correspond to? Is it related to part of the system's some kind of state or a property of the state? And to answer that question, let's actually take a look at of the work. You know, I already drew the tiny little expansion example. So basically, we can see if we can actually express the work in terms of uh, the parameter related to the system, such as temperature, pressure, or volume. So as we um, talked about in previous uh, uh, supplemental window on uh, uh, videos and also the the, power, um, the, the lecture PowerPoint. And the work in this case can always be expressed as minus the external pressure of the change of the volume, right? Because the this, this, this system has to push to the outside, so they do work to the outside. That's where the negative sign comes from. The external pressure usually means the pressure that the system has to do work against the environmental one. So this basically is um, the attempt to convert the work into something related to the system's parameter. Now, so if we actually um, put this expression into the um, first law uh, uh, equation up there, so now we can actually see an uh, interesting uh, situation where you can put into the external pressure in the part. So this is what um, we'll, uh, we'll end up having right now. Now, since we are at constant pressure, so the system's pressure always equals to the external pressure. Or we can just say we, let's discuss in the case when we have a tiny little um, expansion process where um, we make the system's pressure to be equal at a constant pressure. Now here then you can actually see, interestingly, the QP will become P delta V. So this is the system's pressure. Now or you can uh, substitute this into the system's parameter. So what I mean by that is that we can actually just see whether the measurable heat transfer on constant pressure can be related to, related to some parameter of the state. So we're going to move this to the left side. So now it will be delta U plus P delta V uh, equals QP. So now, as you can see, the heat transfer to the system on the constant pressure, where it's not equal to the internal energy per se, but it does relate to the internal energy plus some other aspect of the state. That is, it is related to a state of function of the system. So since pressure is a constant, you can virtually write down the changing of internal pressure and PV equals QP. So this now become clear that if we were to actually combine the internal energy and the pressure volume, and we name it as a new, because pressure volume together is a part of the state function as well. So this the two together is also a state function. And this is when we realize if we're actually going to just always keep tracking this state function, and then they will be equal to the uh, pressure uh, under the constant pressure, the heat transfer to the system. So, so because of that, realize if we were to use a, a new state function, let's call them enthalpy. And then 
the change of uh, enthalpy on the constant pressure would be the heat transfer to the to the system or from the system. So um, similar to the case where um, internal energy is um, related to the heat capacity on constant volume. Now we can virtually do a lot of a measurement on the constant pressure uh, using a different set of parameters that similar to the case of CV except it's on the constant uh, pressure. For example, we can define the heat capacity of constant pressure as raised ent enthalpy over a certain temperature change. Or if you do this in tiny step, the small amount of change of the enthalpy over small temperature. Similarly, if you want to know um, the amount of enthalpy being uh, raised, um, you can simply just measure the amount of heat coming by uh, the measure the CP over temperature range. If the ca heat capacity on the constant pressure is not a constant, you can also similarly do the integration through uh, a similar situation. So by doing this, you are able to, uh, this is much more convenient. So now I'm going to separate this into uh, a different uh, situation. So what this really means for most biological system uh, where it's uh, the heat transfer is done under the constant pressure where the transferred heat does not equal to internal energy but corresponding to a new state function. The state function is internal energy, internal energy plus the pressure volume. If you use this new uh, state function of the system, uh, then you can actually relate the change of the system's energy state plus the volume of the pressure to the heat transfer to the system directly. So because of this, enthalpy is actually much more frequently used uh, in the system when we track the heat of chemical reaction or uh, the binding reaction we talked about earlier when we use uh, calorimetry uh, and also use isothermal titration calorimetry. All of those uh, experimental process end up by using the heat capacity on the constant pressure. Also the heat we're measuring is uh, corresponding to uh, the enthalpy change rather than internal energy change. I uh, just realized I made a mistake uh, in uh, earlier in this uh, writing part should be the uh, enthalpy was defined as internal energy plus the pressure volume of the system. So just um, scratch this out and uh, this is the definition of enthalpy.